everyone. Good Wednesday evening to you. Welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. Things went pretty much as expected last night and first thing this morning. We had some snow that didn't have real big impacts on the roads. We had a handful of accidents here and there, but for the most part, this was accumulation that occurred on, on your car and on the grass and things like that, and certainly on the trees. The uh, snow had no trouble sticking to those surfaces, but uh, a lot of the roads were just wet. We're going to start out this evening with a time lapse from the traffic circle in Columbiana at around 8 a.m. Everything uh, had a little fresh covering of snow on it uh, across the area, but uh, of course, with some sunny intervals, despite cold temperatures, the snow melted very quickly and there was almost no evidence of that snow left on the ground as we got into the afternoon hours for today. We registered at the airport 1.3 inches worth of snow, bringing our April snow total to 2.7. That should be our final number for the month of April. And more than likely, we're done with accumulating snow for the season now. I'm not going to guarantee that just yet, but the odds certainly favor this being kind of the last hurrah for the winter season as far as snowfall. Now, snow at this time of the year is not super unusual, but the magnitude of the snow uh, for a lot of northern Ohio and western PA was a little unusual. Here locally, of course, 1.3 at the airport, making it the fourth latest one inch plus snowfall that we've seen during the spring season on record. The uh, latest was back on May the 9th, 1966, 5.4 inches of snow on May 9th. Yikes. I can't imagine how grumpy everyone was back on May 9th, 1966. Now, 16 years ago, we did have on the 25th of April, 1.2 inches worth of snow. So again, today, the fourth latest uh, springtime snow uh, as far as one inch plus goes on record. Other local amounts, uh, 2.5 in Canfield, 1.6 inches just north of Wellsville down in Columbiana County, 2.6 inches up in Newton Falls, Portersville, over near uh, the eastern fringes of Lawrence County, uh, 1.5. These are just some of the uh, spotter reports uh, relayed to the Weather Service earlier on today. Boy, there's a lot of real estate covered by freeze warnings tonight, not only across uh, parts of Ohio, but all the way back into the Plains states, all the way down into the southeast and into the Mid-Atlantic region as well. Now, in our local area, in our television viewing area, we do not have a freeze warning out, but Carroll County, uh, Jefferson County, Hancock County, Beaver County, all the neighboring counties to the south, freeze warnings are out. Why don't we have a freeze warning here locally? The weather service in both Cleveland and Pittsburgh has uh, yet to declare the start of the growing season in the counties that don't have a freeze warning just yet. And it's a good question. Why is that? Things have been growing for several weeks now. Everything's blooming and uh, spring got off to a fast start. Well, typically the weather service is not going to declare the growing season ha as having begun too far in advance of the average date of the last freeze. And around here, we're still a couple of weeks away from that. There's a lot of climatology involved in this. Yes, the Weather Service consults with some local agricultural interests to see how things are going, but you're not going to see them say, hey, officially the growing season has begun a month ahead of what for us locally is this date, May the 4th, or May the 6th, I should say. That's the 30-year average uh, last 32-degree reading. Last year it didn't occur until the 13th. There's always a variance, but that 30-year average is May the 6th for the last 32. What about a hard freeze? And for the purposes of this, We'll define a hard freeze as temperatures in the 20s. Well, for our local area, the 30-year average final hard freeze, temperatures in the 20s, is coming up in uh, nine days on April the 30th. Last year, our last hard freeze on May the 9th. But a couple of years ago, we had our final night in the 20s uh, as early as April the 2nd. All right, it's going to be a cold night regardless tonight, and everyone should uh, use... Common sense when it comes to protecting your plants, hanging baskets, things like that. Make sure you bring them into the garage, bring them inside. And uh, if you have things that you're going to leave out, make sure that, the, uh, that they're covered up as well. Uh, there's a little upper-level weather disturbance still pivoting through this evening. So even though last night's snow is long gone, there's still going to be some flurries here and there over the next handful of hours. Futurecast picks up pretty well on that. Our model here shows, in fact, there could be some flurries around into 1, 2, 3 a.m. In fact... If there's a little lake enhancement, I'm not going to be shocked if someone tries to get a little fresh coating of snow out of this over the next handful of hours, up till maybe 2 or 3 in the morning. Uh, that'll be the exception, not the rule, but it's something I'm not going to be totally shocked by. The sky clears then overnight tonight, allowing those temperatures to drop in the last few hours before sunrise down into the mid-20s. Another one of these 
little disturbances will pass through the area tomorrow. I suspect locally we are dry, but this might kick off some sprinkles and showers both to our south and to our north, up towards Erie and Buffalo, and also to the south, down towards Parkersburg, Marietta, Charleston, Morgantown, places like that. A sunny start to Friday, probably some frost Friday morning. And then as we get into the afternoon, a little bit of an increase in clouds, but we will stay dry. I think our in-house model here is a little too fast, a little too aggressive with the rain Saturday morning, suggesting it's already raining here at 10 a.m. I suspect that's too fast. I think uh, this is probably even five or six hours too fast. I kind of suspect the rain holds off in most locations until the second half of the afternoon and heading into the evening. So keep that in mind if you have soccer games to attend, baseball, golf outing Saturday, things like that. Locally, I think it's unlikely to rain until at least mid-afternoon, if not late afternoon. So hard freeze tonight, frost a possibility Friday morning, and then a couple of nights where it'll be too warm for any frost and freeze concerns uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, and also Saturday night, Sunday morning. But then Sunday night into Monday morning, uh, this uh, will be a temperature that raises the possibility of some scattered frost. Maybe we get down a little below freezing in many communities first thing Monday morning before a big warm-up ensues for the middle of next week. So uh, yeah, lots of good news here in the medium range. A nice day Monday, seasonably chilly, 58, but then big jump Tuesday, 74 Tuesday, and a week from today... 80 degrees. How long does that stick around? Well, temperatures as far above average as that, probably not very long. This is the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, and you know, this is largely Im influenced, I think, by the kind of days 8 and 9 of, the, of this forecast with some of the residual warmth in the east. But I think some of these, you know, kind of neutral tones out here across the middle of the country, uh, somewhat more seasonable weather is likely to come east as we head towards the end of next week. So the warmest air compared to the average is here for about three days, middle of next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then at the end of the next week into uh, the following weekend, uh, which will be the uh, beginning of May. We should see temperatures retreat back to about average, but, you know, average on May 1st is pretty nice. It's still in the mid and upper 60s. All right, that's it for me tonight. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. Check out the updated forecast tonight at 11, anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app, and I'll be back here with a fresh edition of this video on Thursday.